there. It's August 4th, 2021, and we're here at Universal Studios Florida because there are more exciting Halloween Horror Nights updates that I can't wait to show you. Plus, of course, we're gonna have a fun day, take in the sights and sounds, and enjoy Universal Orlando. Here we are, and already through the archway, I can see the first scare zone. Holy moly, this is so exciting. I can already see a big banner that says Halloween Horror Nights. We're entering the park to the Beetlejuice music. Right when you enter Universal Studios, when you come in right at the entrance of the park here in the Plaza of the Stars area, immediately you see the makings of a Halloween Horror Night scare zone. There's so much theming, signage, and construction. Let me give you an overview of what I'm seeing because I'm already blown away. I'm so excited just seeing this. I can also smell the fog coming from the Shrek Theater that is right now housing a house, a, a maze or a house. Some people call them mazes, some people call them houses. Either way, I call them houses, just cause, I don't know, that's what we called them back in the day. But I can smell it. I can smell the Horror Nights fog that smells synonymous with the Halloween season. I am over the moon excited. I'm trying to keep it cool, I'm trying to keep it calm. And let me just show you, because this is definitely going to be a 30 years, 30 fears, 30th anniversary scare zone. And it looks, ah, it looks so good, let me show you. Look at this sign, this old school Halloween Horror Nights sign. It harkens back to the early days these signs 30 years 30 fears we've got this like these false sort of walls they look sort of medieval it looks like this is gonna be maybe you know icons can stand up here and talk to guests this is a really cool looking stage here it's all broken on top there's this huge frame here with a sign on it lots of lighting so we can see there's gonna be a lot of light and fog in this area this awesome sign here that has some of the icons of Halloween Horror Nights past in it. Unfortunately, they're using it for a stroller parking right now, so it makes it pretty tough to get a nice photo of it, but they're probably going to add some lighting and some more around this. And there's some like coverings here that match with the theme, that like red and black look. Ooh, more, more icons. I was wondering where the rest were. That is really cool. So icons have been a thing at Halloween Horror Nights in years past. They haven't used them for a while, but it looks like we will be celebrating many of these this year. So I wanna know who your favorite icon is, because me, I think I'll take a chance on this one. Wink, I'm winking under my sunglasses. I love seeing the pardon our dust. We are in the process of transforming our park for our Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights, the nation's premier Halloween event signs. They get me so excited. Seeing this whole setup gives me chills. I can already visualize what this area is gonna look like all lit up with fog and icons and scare actors. It just makes me so happy and I know I'm not alone. I know there are a lot of Halloween Horror Nights fans out there. I also know there's a lot of first timers coming this year who have heard about it and wanted to attend and are planning to attend this year. So I like to sprinkle in tips for first timers. I talked about it a little in the last one. This is actually my fourth HHN 30 update of this year. I've been updating when like new merch comes out, new construction updates, all of that. And I'll keep updating you and then of course show you the event once it starts, but I'll sprinkle in that advice. It's windy and sprinkly today, but it actually feels really nice. Weirdly, I know it's only early August, but it is starting to feel like fall here in Florida. I can feel it in the air. A lot of people say Florida doesn't have fall, but I respectfully disagree. I've lived in Florida my whole life, and I think that maybe it requires those fine-tuned Floridian senses because it is very subtle. I'll give you that. It's very subtle, but I can smell it in the air. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Fall is coming. I, I feel it, I sense it, the wind changes. Like, it's just... OMG, this is so perfect. Universal Studios Classic Monsters Cafe. The theming in here is the best around and it's actually open. It's had kind of sporadic hours over the summer and I think, I think it's back. I think it's fully back. If you like Universal Classic Monsters or classic movies in general, you are gonna love this. Let me show you this place. Oh, hey Frank. 
How are ya? Right to the left is the sort of Frankenstein area and then the Dracula area and that's where I'm gonna try to find seating because that's my favorite. We're gonna go ahead and get in this line and have some lunch with the monsters. I'm so happy right now. The food they serve here at Monsters Cafe is basically barbecue. I found it to be really yummy and you get a good amount of food for your money. I feel like the prices went up, I'm not sure, but either way, you still get a lot for your money for, you know, theme park food prices. You can see there's like mac and cheese, biscuits, chicken, all sorts of different BBQ delights. They also do have vegetarian options. Um, they're mostly jackfruit, it looks like. So I'm gonna try the rotisserie chicken salad because the team member here just told me she makes it and it's really good and it sounds really good and different. And of course I'm gonna get some of that delicious mac and cheese because you gotta be kidding me. Every once in a while we get a little Frankenstein's monster, it's a live moment in here. You can also grab and go, um, it looks like some pineapple, a little side salad, cookies for dessert. This is really nice. And also, again, just the theming is so amazing. I got a seat here in my favorite room. This is the Dracula room. Tons of Dracula memorabilia from movies and shows. Plus just, I mean, look at this theming. Like, look at this. Ignore, ignore that and just <laughs> pretend you are like in the castle and you're in Transylvania and oh my goodness. There are various rooms. So we've got the mummy themed area. We've got Phantom of the Opera. I'm gonna go fill up my beverage. So I'm just gonna show you around a little bit. There are busts of Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, mummy, sculpture by Tom Savini. This area is called Swamp Dining. We've got Wolfman, cool swamp theming. Space dining in here. There's so many different areas and they are so cool. There's a lot of space, get it, space <laughs> to dine in here and so many props. I love these machines because there are so many different beverages you can try and I, I like high C. I I always will choose high C. I I'll almost always choose fruit punch too from these. You can actually get iced tea. Iced tea is like my favorite too. But let me see, they don't have like just plain iced tea. Okay, no, see they have all Maybe I'll get some sweet tea instead today. Get a little caffeine in there. Creature from the Black Lagoon, another classic. And I love the like, the water effects and like just things from the movies everywhere. Let's go back to my table. I kind of just left it sitting there. Like what, there's the creature himself. That is just so cool. I just want to dance with him. I don't know why. Okay, yeah, so I left my table by itself because I'm here by myself today, so took a chance, but hoping on people's kindness to just leave my stuff alone. Go back to my seating area and mansion dining. Of course, that's gonna be Dracula's mansion. I love this sign here for the Seward Sanitarium. The actual novel, the Bram Stoker's Dracula novel, is one of my favorite novels. I reread it every year. And over the past few years, I've been listening to it by audiobook each year. And I use this thing called LibriVox. It's an app that has free audiobooks. I'm not like trying to plug them. I'm not affiliated with them in any way or anything. I've just been using them for years. I also use, I forgot what it's called, but an app that lets you connect your library card and check out audiobooks and digital books. So there's a ton of different apps that do that. But LibriVox, I feel like is kind of a hidden gem if you like audiobooks, but they only have old books. Like they don't have the hot new books. So they do have Dracula and like old classics. And I love listening to them. And they have multiple different versions. So you can hear different like readers, um, narrators reading them and there's like one particular version of Dracula that has just become like my comfort listen and I listen to it every year, multiple times a year. I used to listen to it a lot when I was driving from Miami to Orlando all the time and it just, oh, I love it so much. So yeah, this, this is my room. Now it is dark in here so I apologize for that but sorry not sorry because I love it. Let's have my salad. They made this fresh by the way. It wasn't like pre-packaged or anything. Can I open it is the question. Yes. Oh, that's so nice. Healthy option. Dracula would have 
because he wants you to be in good shape so that he can drink your blood. Now we all know Dracula is not a vegetarian by any means, nor is the salad vegetarian because it's filled with rotisserie chicken. But it is a nutritious looking option. Like there are eggs in here. There's all sorts of vegetables. You know what? Let me shine a little bit of light on this situation. So it's a lot of chicken, a lot of salad, cucumbers, some like quinoa in there. Am I making this salad creepy by doing this? Tomatoes. Yeah, this is nice. Nutritious and delicious. Some iced tea. I didn't see any unsweetened iced tea as I showed you, but I got sweet tea because you know what? Now, of course, you can get your choice of dressing with the salad, so I got ranch, as always. Let's try some mac and cheese first, though, because I also got mac and cheese. It's a little watery, to be honest. Not as good as I remember it. Maybe it's an off day for the mac and cheese. It happens. No matter. I have a massive salad in front of me. The problem with salads in these tiny containers is it's like hard to get it out. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I'm good. It's really, really good. It's probably the best salad I've had at Universal ever. So surprise, surprise. It is still closing early. It's closing at 3.30 or 4, so check those hours. But all done and we're heading out. Yeah, so that's why it's kind of seemed not open because it has very limited hours. Look at the fog on the windows. That is, or the condensation, sorry. Because it's so cold in there and so warm out here. So I've noticed they seem to never have the hours posted here. They just put up, uh, sorry we missed you. Visit us as Mel's Drive-In when they're closed. I personally don't love Mel's. I'll, I'll do it if I have to, but the food is not the same. You're not getting barbecue. You're not getting variety. The atmosphere is definitely not as cool in my opinion. So that is not a substitute at all. I'm really glad we got to catch this before it closed today. Now right outside the Monsters Cafe, you can see this red film on the windows. So the light does come in from the outside where we are now. It filters through that red film and that's what gives it that red cast in the Dracula's castle or mansion room that is my favorite room because it's just dark and creepy and I love Dracula. He's my favorite of the Universal Monsters so it's just cool to see it from the other side, this like red film, it's, it's a blood. So yeah, they're cleaning up in there, they're closing up, and we're still here. Let's see what we shall get into next. In my last Halloween Horror Nights construction update video, I showed you this massive stage. They've added some more theming on either side of it. More of these like toxic barrel things with these eye, like the wrench sort of symbol on them, or like a gear, I guess. It's like a gear symbol. And then there's that like sideways eye, the ultimate side eye as I've nicknamed it. Going on here, they've added this black sheet here that looks like there's a stage up there for performers, giant speakers up here. Please do not climb. And another one of the pardon our dust signs. When I first saw this, you could see right through here because this black um, screen, I'm calling it a screen, but curtain, whatever you want to call it, wasn't here. So you could see right through into the New York park behind it. It was really cool. Here again, more of these barrels and some barricades with the theming on them. This is looking really, really cool. Universal clearly wants us to see it because it is out here to build excitement and anticipation. And they do announce the houses and scare zones in advance. They've announced quite a few already. So I'll tell you what they have announced so far. So far, Universal has announced the following houses, the Haunting of Hill House, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Universal Monsters, The Bride of Frankenstein Lives, and Beetlejuice. We also know that Revenge of the Tooth Fairy will most likely be making a return from last year, as well as a puppet theater house that they did briefly announce last year. Now, Universal has not yet announced any scare zone so we are still waiting for those announcements but there are some like this the name and the theme have not been announced we can see like it's something it's something cool but we don't know what it is and it's nothing super recognizable but i would love to hear your speculation on what you think this is what the scare zone is going to be based on this theming with the sort of creepy scary i don't know dystopian government type of a thing with these barrels. And I'm gonna show you some more of this in just a minute. Here is a big, giant, military-looking truck. 
another addition to this scare zone area that was not here last time I was here. It's got that same side eye symbol on it and it says 374th or 374THF1 BN. Who knows what that means? I don't know what that means. Oh, and it says 3 October. Interesting. Oh my gosh, what is it? The back here is all covered in red. I feel like, is this thing full of like blood? I like how the do not climb signs have the eye on them too. So they even incorporate the theming into the like cautionary signs. This is really, really cool looking. Right next to this vehicle are these giant tanks full of what appears to be blood. Let's be honest, it looks like blood. It's red, and then there's a stage looking situation here in front of it with the truck back there. So I feel like this is a, gonna be part of the show, part of the scare zone. This is gonna be so cool. There's so much going on here. Here's another structure probably for a scare actor to be on top of. And there are these red lights up here, probably like sirens will be going off. I'm picturing like, meh, meh, meh. you know, you know the feel. More jugs of presumably blood or who knows what sort of toxic sludge is gonna be in there. These areas are covered up. So I'm guessing something is either back there or going to be back there really soon because they were open last time I was here. I see a little indentation there, so that makes me think something's gonna be in there. Quick heads up, some of the things here at Halloween Horror Nights can be a little scary, but it's all covered up for the construction updates. But I might talk a little bit about it, but I'll try to keep it like not scary. I always try to keep the videos family friendly so that anyone can watch them. But I also want my horror fans to be able to enjoy this the same way that I do. Now I don't, there's a certain types of scary movies and things that I like and there's certain that I don't like. Um, and I, I understand everybody kind of likes some and doesn't like others. So I'll try to keep it like general enough so that we can all enjoy it, but also keep it so that everyone can watch it. So if I describe things a certain way that you're like, come on, we all know that's gallons of blood, whatever, which I am saying that, but we all know it's fake. It's fake blood, it's just for pretend. Uh, but if I say other things a certain way or use euphemisms, that's why. So I am picturing uh, a, a being hooked up, perhaps, hooked up in here and being pumped, pumped out. They're fluids. I'm trying, I'm trying to describe, <laughs> you know, you all know what I'm saying, I think. Use your imagination what you picture here. This is gonna be really, really cool. So I was just talking to an awesome team member and we were looking at this and we were talking about the windows. So I've kind of mentioned before that the windows here, just like the windows on Main Street USA, have little Easter eggs and names of important people and different things going on. Um, but we looked over here and noticed the controller sees all. I did not see that last time and I don't know that I would have even noticed it if we weren't sitting here looking at the windows. So always look up. I've said this a lot, but universal themes all the way to the top. Now some of the theming that I saw last time that was sort of in this general area is gone now. And there are just a few barrels here, but there's still quite a lot more. It's so funny because this is the New York area and these barrels just kind of blend in. Like they just look like New York barrels. But look up here, now I'm looking up everywhere. Submit to the controller. Oh my goodness. And wherever these controller signs are, we can see these round things on top here, on the top of the building with like a pipe coming out of it. So that might be like fog that comes out or lights or fire or who knows, some kind of cool effect is definitely going to accompany each of these signs warning us about the controller. See, there's one over there too. Right above that sign. Here's some more of the theming that was here last time I was here, but significantly altered. There are these jugs, but this time there's one red and one black, and it looks so scary and gross. Obviously it looks gross on purpose. That is theming. That is gross, scary theming. Oh my gosh, what on earth is gonna be in here? Oh, it's like splattered all over. There's numbers printed on it. We've got the barrels with the sort of gear thing in here, a covered up piece in the front of it. Whatever's covered up, they clearly don't want us to see in there. There's more of these like pumps and fixtures and tubes and there's like, so these I can picture like being turned maybe and something happens. Another one of these two. This one's got a three on it. 
These are numbered, so there's one, there's two, and there's three. And then this one has that same cracked cement look, but no number on it. Interesting. We saw these trusses last time here near the Central Park area. They've got a lot of lights on top. Back here in what used to be the Barney attraction area that is now the entrance to the DreamWorks destination dance party that I showed in a recent video. Uh, usually this is the entrance to a Halloween Horror Nights house, but I'm not seeing anything back here. Not that we necessarily would see, oh, a helicopter. There are helicopter tours that they do near here, so you'll see them going by a lot. But anyway, not that you necessarily would see anything. They usually would put up the signs like last minute and everything's back there, but just checking. Here behind Men in Black is the facade for the Cary, Ohio house. I showed that in the last video, so I'll put that footage in now to avoid having to get back in the line right now or get in anyone's way, since I already did show it. But you can see it from when you're in line for Men in Black. The sign for Fear Factor's been covered up for quite a while. Who knows what's gonna happen back here, if they're gonna use this for a show this year. It has been used for Horror Night shows in past years. But time will tell. Truss update. Lights atop the truss. Another truss here with lighting on top of it. Quite a bit of lighting there. Another lighting rig here. Lots of crowds everywhere. So it looks like there's gonna be a lot of lighting in this area. Well, hello, here in the San Francisco area of the park. We've got more of these structures, these trusses. So this could be for like signage, lights, any number of things that need to be supported basically. Got a lot of crowds in this area too. And there's more here. These could be lighting fixtures, lighting uh, setups. So see this truss has nothing on it, but this one here is covered in lights, all sorts of lighting set up there. There's one light there that's covered in like a plastic covering probably just because of the rain today. But that one looks like a strobe light. See that covered one? Like a floodlight or a zoom light? Um, zoom light? What? <laughs> like a floodlight or a uh, strobe light or something? So here just outside the exit to the Fast and Furious attraction in the San Francisco area, it looks like we've got the very beginnings, the makings of another scare zone. Much earlier in its uh, building than the other one that we saw, the other two that we saw in New York and up at the front of the park, but Nonetheless, the makings of a scare zone. These are so massive and they come up so quickly. I feel like next time I come, maybe next week or so, there's gonna be more up here. There's already some lighting up there. You can see it now that I'm up close. In order to hold all of this up, we've got these huge weights and these thick cables on both sides of each side. It's now after 4 p.m. so that means I can use my express pass so let's see if we can find something to ride. Transformers has a wait time of 45 minutes but I have express so I should be able to take the express line. Much shorter line here. Here we go. EDC guidelines and to wear face coverings while indoors. Thank you for your cooperation. I am Optimus Prime. I know we are asking much of you this day, but the Decepticons leave us no choice. Evac believes you can help him protect the Allspark. I believe you can too. So the fate of the Earth is in your hands. Masks are required at Universal, but they're suggested for indoor things. Oh, here we go. Megatron. Reverse thrusters. Full <laughs> Your bravery saved the planet. Well done, freedom fighters. <laughs> Thanks for being the challenge. Let's head on back to base. You can ride with us anytime. The glasses are also sanitized. I find Transformers so fun. Look at how huge the show building is. When you're in there, that vehicle moves around so much. It goes up and down so many levels. It turns around. It's actually really cool and fun. It's kind of the same principle as the Spider-Man ride in Islands of Adventure. Personally, I think whether you like the Transformers movies or not, that ride is really fun. But I think if you like grew up watching Transformers or you like the newer modern movies, either way, I think that's a really fun one. It's just fun.
Oh my gosh, it's raining like crazy. Let's use my new Vera Bradley tiny umbrella that they sent me. Thank you so much, Vera Bradley. So awesome. Oh, much better. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am now protected, and it matches my bag. It's so cute. Oh, oh look. Um, Optimus Prime's out. Let's go say hi to him. You going away? Welcome, recruit. Did a good job. We protected the Allspark. Hello. Hello. Bye. Thank you, human. You're welcome. We love you. Gotta keep them dry, gotta keep them dry. This umbrella is so cute. I know this is a Disney umbrella, but don't tell anyone here. No one will notice. No one will notice. And don't be suspicious. So I've been bringing you to check out the Five and Dime because they've been releasing new Halloween Horror Nights 2021 preview merch pretty regularly, like every other week or sometimes every week. The newest shirt they released is the Bride of Frankenstein shirt. And this is a woman's cut with a long sort of v-neck here and like more of a slender woman's cut. So they did already release the Frankenstein's monster shirt, which I bought, but I have not purchased this one yet. So I'm going to, I don't, love the way this cut looks on me to be honest i like wearing normal t-shirts but i'm gonna get it and give it a try because i love the design i normally get medium because if you notice i like i like to wear baggy loose clothes i don't really like to wear tight clothes that's just what's comfortable for me everybody's different so since this is a slimmer cut i'm gonna go ahead and get large so that it's loose and flowy the way i like it whoop it's so flowy it flowed right off the hanger oh boy i only have one hand right now oh this is a challenge Nope, there we go, that never happened. Wow, I love it. Just for comparison, this is the first shirt that came out that's Frankenstein focused, and then this is Frankenstein's bride focused. And just like last time, I'll recommend that you re-watch Bride of Frankenstein movie before doing the house for this, the Bride of Frankenstein lives house, because it's such an awesome house, and it really picks up right where the movie leaves off. It's so fun to watch the old classic Universal monster movies, even if you've never seen them before. I recommend watching them. They're really fun, really interesting. And if you've seen them before, but it's been a long time, I definitely recommend a rewatch because that's what I do. I hadn't seen them for a long time and I did a rewatch last Halloween season. It was so fun. So I think I'm gonna do it again this year. And the sizes again are going up to 3XL here. Some of them go up to 4X. So if you ask a team member, they can usually help you with that. There's the Beetlejuice shirt, Beetlejuice. Purchased that one last time. Frankenstein. This is the Jack is back shirt. The Jack is back, he's the, like, the icon of all icons. The first announcement they made on their Instagram story too. I got that shirt. And look, a Dracula toy, a figure. I love this. They even have more of the Haunting of Hill House shirts. That's the one I'm wearing today. This one, there's more of those in stock. <laughs> oh, more of these bendy figs of the monsters. I, I kind of love them. I forgot my reusable bag today. I've been remembering it almost every time, but I forgot it today. But I'll do my best to reuse this bag too because it is really cute and durable. But shirt purchase. The official Instagram account of Halloween Horror Nights for Universal Orlando Resort has posted that they are going to do a countdown to HHN, that's short for Halloween Horror Nights, and they started yesterday. I'm waiting for the next announcement they haven't made, but I'm expecting a lot more announcements really soon because we're now a month away from the opening day of Halloween Horror Nights 2021 30th anniversary year. I'd say that was a successful day checking out some brand new Halloween Horror Nights construction, merch, props, theming, all sorts of cool stuff everywhere. Got a little ride in there too and got a lunch with the monsters before it closed for the day, which woo -woo, a lot of fun things coming up. We're getting close to fall now and if you've watched my channel in the past, you know that I love fall or autumn as some people call it, but basically I just call it spooky season. I love, 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 love infinity squared. Halloween and Halloween season. I love pumpkins, I love old school spooky fun stuff. Bats and witches and skeletons and spooky goodness galore. I love it. It makes me so happy and I know I'm not alone. I know a lot of people love it too. So if you do, get pumped because like every spooky season, I try to cover as many cool Halloween happenings as possible. I go to the big Halloween events at Disney World and Universal, 
SeaWorld, Busch Gardens, and I also go to the small, cool, local haunts because I love them and I know that's more of a niche thing, but hopefully a lot of you will give it a try, give it a chance, check the videos out because it's a lot of fun, so much creativity. It's amazing. It's so cool what happens here in Orlando and all over the country really, but like Orlando's special. I'll put this bag down for a second because it's making a lot of crumpling sounds. <laughs> Not just haunts though, I usually do tours of like anything Halloween related events shops but I make sure to mix it up so it's not just all Halloween 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 all the time I'll do a ton of other topics like always there's a lot of variety on my channel if you've missed anything I recently did the Tampa Bay Comic Con I did a wine tasting at a hotel in Orlando I try to do like a wide variety of things and hopefully you all enjoy them all and give them a go and check it out and see other things that are going on of course another big Disney World update video will be coming at you soon because there's a lot going on over there so I'm gonna be paying them a visit really really soon so stay tuned for that and just all the other fun stuff and if you're new here you enjoy this sort of thing updates from the theme parks Orlando travel just cool fun unique things to do updates fun facts I always try to pepper in like fun facts history cool out of the way things details that maybe a lot of other people don't talk about give you those give you those tips and fun facts I just love like hidden gem type of info things and places so and with all that, if you do enjoy this sort of thing, please subscribe to join in all the future fun. And once again, I'm sending you all a ton of love. I'll see you for the next video, which will be very soon. And until then, as always, stay enthused. Bye.